hello out there welcome to this tutorial on binomial probability distribution we'll be looking at the formula the properties and some solved problems on binomial probability distribution so we start with introduction the binomial probability distribution is a very good approach for resolving probability involving random experiment which has two possible outcomes the outcome that the event will occur and the outcome that the event will not occur the tossing of a fair coin and throwing of unbiased die repeatedly are typical examples in the case of a coin we consider it either a head or not a head it could be either a tail or not a tail and invariably there are two options there if it is not a head then it is a tail also for a die we may consider the event of having six or not six and any other choice of numbers now we now look at the formula if we consider the probability that in n number of trials with r successes and n minus r failures by probability of x is equal to r then probability of x is equal to r will be n combination r p raised to power r q raised to power n minus r where p is probability of success and q is the probability of failure recall n combination r is n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial also note that the events are independent of one another for the number of trials remember if it is a die you threw the first one the outcome will not affect the throwing of the second one repeatedly in that order the same thing for a die now we look at properties of binomial probability distribution if we denote the mean and standard deviation of the binomial distribution as mu and sigma respectively then the mean mu is np standard deviation that sigma is equal to square root of npq and finally variance which is sigma squared is npq so now we go into solving problems example one a fair coin is tossed six times find the probability of obtaining a exactly four heads b at least five heads and c at most two heads so in our solution we bring in the binomial probability distribution formula that is we need to get our r our n our p and our q so also we get our n so here the probability of success here is one over two and also the probability of failure that is probability of not getting head is one over two then we look at our n the number of times the coin is tossed is our n so we have it as six and remember for a our r is four so probability of getting exactly four heads out of tossing the coin for six times and that is going to give us six combination four times success which is one over two raised to power r and our r is four that's going to be one over two to the power of four then times failure which is also one over two that is not having head then raised to power n minus r 6 minus 4 which gives 2 so simplifying this 6 combination 4 is 15 times 1 over 16 times 1 over 4 so here we will now have it as 
15 over 64. And that is the probability of obtaining exactly 4 heads. B. The probability of obtaining at least 5 heads. Now since the probability says at least 5 heads, so the least you can get out of the 6 true is 5. So we can have 5 heads and 1 tail or all of them 6. So it means it's going to be probability of x is greater than or equal to 5 which is going to give us probability of x is equal to 5 or probability of x is equal to 6. And you remember our O means addition. So we then go ahead to find the probability of x equal to 5 and add it to the probability of x equal to 6. So that we now have it as 6 combination 5 times probability of success that is 1 over 2 raised to power 5 times 1 over 2 raised to power 1 then this is all which means plus for probability of x is equal to 6 we have it as 6 combination 6 times p which is 1 over 2 raised to power 6 then times failure which is 1 over 6 raised to power 0 so 6 combination 5 gives 6 times 1 over 32 times 1 over 2 plus 6 combination 6 is 1 times 1 over 64 times 1 since half raised to power 0 is 1 so simplifying this we have it as 6 over 64 plus 1 over 64 and that gives our final answer as 7 over 64 which is the probability of obtaining at least 5 heads when a coin is tossed 6 times so we go to see part of the problem for c at most 2 at most the highest we can get the two heads so in this case now we are going to have it as p of x less than or equal to 2 which is going to give us probability of getting 0 that is x is equal to 0 or probability of x is equal to 1 or probability of x is equal to 2 so we now find the probability of x is equal to 0 that of x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2 and sum them up so that probability of x is equal to 0 now will be 6 combination 0 times p which is half raised to power 0 times q which is half raised to power 6 then plus probability of x is equal to 1 will be 6 combination 1 times p raised to power 1 which is half raised to power 1 times half raised to power 5 remember when you add, add the powers here you are meant to have 6 which gives the total number of n then plus probability of x is equal to 2 will be 6 combination 2 times 1 over 2 squared times 1 over 2 to the power of 4 and simplifying this, 6 combination 0 is 1 times 1 times 1 over 64. Then plus 6 combination 1 gives 6 times half times 1 over 32. Then also plus 6 combination 2 gives 15 times 1 over 4 times 1 over 16 so this is simplified as 1 over 64 plus 6 over 64 then plus 15 over 64 simplifying finally we have 1 plus 6 which is 7 plus 15 22 over 64 and in the simplest form we have it as 11 over 32 and that gives the probability of getting at most two heads when a coin is tossed six times.
So we'll go to example two. Example two, an unbiased die with six faces is thrown five times. Find the probability that A, a factor of six appears exactly three times. B, a perfect square appears at most four times. In this problem, we are going to treat A and B separately because the event in A is different from the event in B. So starting from A, we need to get our sample space, which is the numbers on the faces of a fair die. So we have it as 1 to 6 and n of s is 6. The event space of getting a factor of 6 is f and the factor of 6 here are 1, 2, 3 and 6 and n of f is equal to 4. The essence of having this is to enable us to get the values of p and q. So to get our q, which is the probability of success for obtaining a factor of 6, will now be 4 over 6. In the simplest form, we have it as 2 over 3. Then the probability of not having a factor of 6, which is q, will be 1 minus 2 over 3, and that gives 1 over 3. Our n here is 5, since the die is thrown 5 times, and our r, which is exactly 3 times, will give us 3. So that probability of x is equal to 3 will be 5 combination 3 times 2 over 3 raised to power 3 times 1 over 3 raised to power 2 since 2 plus 3 gives a 5 which is our n so 5 combination 3 gives 10 times simplifying this that will give us 8 over 27 times 1 over 9 and finally we have it as 80 over 243 and that is the a part of example 2 we go to b part of the problem um, here we still maintain our sample space which is still 1 to 6 and n of s is 6 then for perfect square we represent the event space as e which is going to give us a 1 comma 4 the perfect squares here are 1 and 4 and we have n of e to be equal to 2 this will enable us to get the values of p and q so probability of having success, that is having a perfect square, will be 2 over 6, which is equal to 1 over 3. And for Q, which is the probability of not having a perfect square, will be 1 minus 1 over 3, which is 2 over 3. And our N is still 5. And then our R, since it is at most 4, four times then the highest we can get there is four which means we can have it as a zero one two three and four we can't get more than four since it is at most four times so the probability now of having x less than or equal to four will be probability of one minus probability of x is equal to five because in the entire space, it is only five since it is thrown five times. It is only five that is not there. So we can just quickly say one minus probability of getting five. So that's going to give us one minus five combination five times P, which is one over three to the power of five times 2 over 3 to the power of 0 and that will give us 1 minus 5 combination 5 is 1 1 over 3 to the power of 5 is 1 over 243 
then times 1 since 2 over 3 to the power of 0 is 1 so that 1 minus 1 over 243 will give us 242 over 243 and that is the probability of obtaining perfect square at most four times from throwing a die for five times and that's all for example two so we go to example three example three a test contains 10 multiple choice questions comprising of four options in which only one option is correct find the probability that a candidate can get seven out of the ten questions correctly the probability of getting it correctly is only one over four we get that and uh, okay let's go the probability of getting one of the questions correctly is one over four and uh, the probability of getting it wrong is three over four so that our n is 10 since there are 10 multiple choice questions and uh, our r is going to be 7 so that the probability of x is equal to 7 will be 10 combination 7 times 1 over 4 to the power of 7 times 3 over 4 to the power of 3 so 10 combination 7 is 120 times 1 over 16,384 that is 4 raised to the power 7 times 27 over 64 so simplifying this we have our answer as 0 0.003899 which represents the probability that a student can guess seven out of the ten questions correctly and that's the end of example three we go to example four for example four the probability that a patient will be cured of coronavirus when injected with the new vaccine is 0 0.8 find the probability that exactly three out of the eight coronavirus patients will be cured on being injected with the vaccine so again we know our probability of success that is uh, p is 0 0.8 and q will be 1 minus 0 0.8 which is 0 0.2 our n is equal to 8 since there are 8 patients and the uh, our expectation is 3 so r is equal to 3 the probability of x is equal to 3 will be 8 combination 3 times 0 0.8 to the power of 3 since p is 0 0.8 times 0 0.2 to the power of 5 so we are done so from here we have 8 combination 3 to be 56 and 0 0.8 to the power of 3 gives 0 0.512 and 0 0.2 to the power of 5 we give 0 0.00032 simplifying this we have the probability to be 0 0.00917504 which represents the probability that 3 out of 8 coronavirus patients will be cured on being injected with the vaccine and that's the end of solution to example 4 this is the highest we can take in this tutorial please like and share this video remember to subscribe to our youtube channel if you have not done that also check the description section of this video on our youtube channel to get other videos on probability until we come your way again goodbye